let's get ready together. One video I absolutely loved filming for you guys and that you guys loved was my chatty get ready with me. Back then I asked you guys to send me questions on Instagram and it was more like a Q&A about me. And I thought I wanna film a video like that again just where we can chat. It's like we're on FaceTime, you guys can get to know me better. But this time instead of a Q&A, I am just going to be oversharing and exposing my deepest thoughts and just what I've been thinking about lately. If you guys watched the last video on my vlog channel, which was my productive week in the life, then you guys know last week was like the most busiest jam-packed week of my life. I literally remember before I even started the week, I was so afraid of just the constant busyness, not really being able to take a break and just pushing myself beyond my regular limit. Today is Tuesday, so it's the start of a new week. And so I've been reflecting a lot on that really busy week and what it taught me. And if you watched it, then you know, I didn't just get through that week, I conquered it. And the more that I reflect on it, the more I realize how confident that experience made me. Like, what do you mean? I was so terrified about whether I would be able to get the thing done and I did it anyway. And so not only has it improved my confidence in my abilities, but it's also taught me a really important lesson about fear. Because leading up to that week, my main emotion was fear, anxiety, and worry. And now that I've completed that week, I'm like, what was there even to be scared about? when I knew I had never gone through a week like that before and yet I used that reasoning to be like, okay, well, I'm scared now. But if I've never gone through it before, I would have never known the outcome. Okay, fear is only reasonable if you've been down a certain path and you're about to go down the exact same path again, which is guaranteed to get you the same result that you know about and that result scared you the last time you experienced it. But if you're about to embark on something new and you have no idea which way it's gonna go, fear is literally the most useless emotion in that scenario because it's irrelevant. It literally makes no sense. I felt so sure that that week was gonna burn me out or I was gonna mess up on it. And instead I finished it feeling confident, accomplished and proud of my myself. And so just that lesson in itself has now really influenced the way that I'm going to deal with fear moving forward because it links back to what I say about portfolio of proof on my main channel. The best thing you can do for your confidence is to continuously step outside of your comfort zone and allow yourself to experience things because then the next time you're feeling insecure or unconfident about something, you have all these memories in your head of, oh my God, remember that time I thought I wouldn't be able to do something and then I very well went and did it. And it literally proves all of your self-doubt and disbelief wrong. And also by getting through that week, I've realized it's made me into the type of person that is better equipped at getting the dream life that I'm after. Like I know that with the more success and wealth that I go after, it's inevitable that my life will get busier and those hectic weeks that where I'm in such demand is just gonna get more frequent. And through experiencing that week for the first time last week, I learned so many lessons. I changed the way that I felt about myself. I've gained so many new skills in dealing with that week that now I am starting to, to become the person that I need to be on this journey to achieving my goals. Because isn't the whole reason as to why we don't have what we want to have right now because we are not the type of people that can get those things yet and so actually we need to just embark on these journeys to be able to grow adapt and learn more so that then when we are transformed into an improved version of ourselves then we actually have all of the resources knowledge and tools in our arsenal to be able to get those goals that we wish for for example if you want to be a millionaire there are certain things you have to learn on your journey you need to become more disciplined you need to work harder so that you can be the type of person that gets a million pounds it's it's really just all in the journey and so by completing that week I feel so much more confident that I'm like I am one step closer to becoming that person that I know I need to be to get the things that I am desiring. But speaking of wealth, success and fancy things, I was looking at my vision board the other day and I noticed that I put a Rolex watch on there and I was just looking at it like why did I even put this on there? Like I'm not someone who's really into watches when it comes to fancy things. My main thing is designer bags and literally that's it. Like I don't even buy designer clothes because I honestly don't see the point in that. I'm not like a huge designer girly. I like a few certain things, but that's it. And I was thinking like, I'm not even a watch collector. Like if I got a Rolex, I would literally get one and then I would never really care about getting another fancy watch again. So why did I feel that this was important enough to use the very limited space on my vision board to put a Rolex? on there and it made me realize that I have this thing where if there is something that is only available to a certain amount of people or something that is luxury and desirable and is kind of marketed as something that the average person can't get and that not everybody can have 
I want it. Like I want it so bad. And it's like this thing of proving to myself that I can do literally anything I put my mind to. Cause I look at a Rolex and I think, what do you mean there's a super beautiful watch that somebody my age isn't supposed to have? Like that's not accessible to somebody like me. And literally the first thought in my head is, okay, bet. Okay, bet, watch me go get it now. I don't know why my brain works like this. It gets like super competitive with myself almost. But hey, at the same time, I ain't mad about it because it honestly motivates me to work harder. And don't get me wrong, this is not limited to just designer things. This is just in general in life. It's exactly the reason why I decided to set up my first business at 17 years old because that's not a normal thing to do when you're still in school studying. And it's probably also the reason as to why I juggle so many different things. Like yes, I'm a YouTuber, but I had to have two channels. And on top of that, I have a podcast Podcast, which is now coming up with another YouTube channel because my podcast is about to be on video, by the way. And then on top of that, I wrote a book. And then on top of that, I'm on every other social media platform. I think the thing about me is limits give me the ick. I don't wanna to say to myself, doing one YouTube channel is so hard and I won't be able to manage anything else. No, let me go try something else. Let me do a podcast and then see if I can do it. Truthfully, when I set up my podcast, I was so scared. I was like, I'm never gonna manage this. This is too time consuming. I've already got too much on my plate and I'm doing it. And it, once again, it links back to that confidence thing. Now I'm like, I could literally probably set up a business tomorrow. And I, although I don't know how I'll get it done, I will figure it out. And just to make sure that I'm not romanticizing it too much, I do want to say it comes with its sacrifices. Ever since moving to London six weeks ago, my friends and family members have been asking me like, oh, what have you been getting up to? Like, what have you seen? Where have you gone? And I literally respond to every single one of them nothing, I've just been working. And it's the truth, like there are so many things on my list of things I wanna do and see in London and I know I'm gonna get around to doing them, but in these first six weeks, majority of the time, whenever I've left, left the house or gotten dressed up to go somewhere, it's for a work event. It's for an influencer event, it's to collab with someone, it's to do some filming or be in a studio somewhere. Apart from the few dates I've been on with my boyfriend, I just haven't had the time to think about exploring London and having fun right now. But you know what, I'm so okay with that because the reason I moved here was mostly for the work opportunities and I feel so blessed to say that they have come my way and my biggest priority happened. And you can't have it all all of the time. I'm the biggest believer that you can have it all, but you do need to have balance. You need to have different seasons of your life. And I apply that even to my weekly schedule. Like Monday to Saturday, I'm straight just in work mode. And then Sunday is where sometimes I'll go out and explore or I'll rest or I'll have my relaxation and self-care regimens. I feel gratitude for my life a lot of the time, but I think recently since people have been asking me those questions, it's definitely made me think more about the sacrifice that's required, which I guess I didn't really realize before. So one thing that's been on my mind a lot is I keep getting flashbacks of happy times I've had with my family. As a child, as a teen, like cute moments with my grandparents, making memories with my cousins, the day outs we used to have, how we used to spend every day of summer together and stuff like that. And it's such a bittersweet feeling because I look at those memories with such happiness and almost like missing that time in my life and knowing it's never gonna come back. And I guess I just didn't know that in the pursuit of your goals, no one prepares you for the amount of nostalgia you're gonna feel for the life you previously had, and especially in mourning the person that you used to be. Cause listen, I had to grow like a lot. I really did not like who I used to be, but when I'm looking back on these memories, I like miss the free time I used to have or the amount of time I invested in family and the things I used to get up to every single weekend. I get nostalgia for like those simple pleasures I used to have because the busier you get and the more consumed you get in your goals, those simple pleasures do become less accessible. Things like hanging around with your friends as much as you used to, even making time for like texts and FaceTimes. I rarely, rarely see my family. Like over the last year, I've seen my family once every two to three months. And to deal with that, I've just been reminding myself that your new life is going to cost you your old one. And that missing how things used to be is normal. It doesn't mean you're in the wrong place. It doesn't mean you're not grateful for what you have. It's normal to miss these memories because those memories are all that you know. Your future doesn't exist to you yet. All we can ever see and remember is past memories. What we don't know is that life could literally be preparing us right now for happiness and fulfillment that we couldn't even conjure up in our minds. Like it could be giving us such success and such abundance that we wouldn't even know to wish for and that's already on its way to us. And so it's normal sometimes to feel a little bit consumed by the things you feel like you're leaving behind or missing out on because you're not aware of what awaits you in your future and that 
I truly believe that everything in our future is what we've always wanted. Like on this journey with growing, you become more and more aligned to your authenticity and making everything that you once wanted to happen, happen. And our past most of the time was just figuring things out and trying to get to where we are today. Also, since living in London, I have had the realization like the other day that my lifestyle and mindset is so not normal. And you would think that I knew this, but I definitely did not. And basically this all started from me people watching and observing the after work culture in London. Every single pub, restaurant, cafe, arcade, whatever is full to the brim every single evening. With just people like socializing and having a good time or meeting new people. Like one thing about Londoners is they know how to socialize and I most definitely do not. Like I'll literally be doing my normal work at 5 p.m. just like any other person. But then as I look out my window, I'm seeing all of these people out and about having a great time and I'm still indoors doing the same work at 9 p.m. And through observing this, I realized, oh, so like, so people don't come home and have all of these habits and things that you have to complete and work tasks and side hustles and businesses. They just do their job and then they go out and they experience life. What? Like, I, it wasn't even on my radar. Like, at a logical point, yes, I knew that people live that way, but the more and more I've seen it, the more and more it's put into perspective how different the life I live is. And I think that unawareness of how other people live is as a result of who and what I surround myself with. Like, even when it comes to my friends, they're all business owners, or they have side hustles, or they're doing something creative, and they don't have a typical, like, work-life balance. I literally have a friend who works in the hospital as a doctor. Like, he gets called in to do night shifts, he's busy, he's working everything, single day and then right after he's got a DJ gig. He's traveling across the country. He's traveling to other countries to do a DJ gig after helping a woman give birth. And then on the weekends or late at night, he's working on his social media strategy because he's also trying to do content creation. And so the more I hang around with my friends and have conversations with them, the more normalized it comes to be doing work all the time and for that to be the center of your life. And so when I see people living in a different way, I'm like, it's like a bit of a culture shock for me. It honestly just goes to show that what you surround yourself with becomes your new normal. And I'm not even mad about it. Like I love my lifestyle and I love that work is the center of my life because that suits me and my needs and it makes me happy. It has taught me a very important lesson that your surroundings will become your reality to a point where you literally don't know anything different. I remember when I was a uni student and I was partying like three times a week, going to bed at 4 a.m., eating fast food after the club. Like my whole life was just partying and drinking and having fun. And that was my life because everybody around me was doing that. It was so, so normal. And if I walked into that version of myself's life and was like, this is what you do now. This is how you spend your weekends. This is how much you work. That version of myself would literally probably get the ick and be like, ew, like you don't even know how to have fun. Like you must live such an unfulfilling life. I don't get it. Like, how are you living like that? You're doing too much. Maybe you should relax. But I don't wanna do that because that doesn't align with me, but that version of myself would say that because she doesn't know anything different. All that's normalized to her is partying and living that life, that living like this would be so unfamiliar and alien to her that it wouldn't even make sense because she hasn't exposed herself to that kind of lifestyle and to people with those mindsets. But that's definitely made me grateful and the people that I surround myself with now and that it really helps me just stay on this path and stay motivated. But you know what, let's move on from work chat right now. Um, a really deep thought that I had recently actually was about healing. So a little bit of context for those of you who don't know I practically grew up in London for 10 years of my life from around 7 to 17 years old and this is because my parents were living in London. I lived um, a few hours away with my grandparents and so every school holiday every other weekend I would spend a few days in London visiting my parents. My parents are no longer together and I don't have a relationship with either of them. My grandparents are more so my parents but now that I'm actually living in London and going around central London I've been seeing a lot of things that remind me of my childhood and I was on a date with my boyfriend the other day and I was showing him this bakery that I completely forgot about and I was like oh my god the this bakery's cupcakes were my absolute favorite when I was living up and my parents used to take me here all the time and afterwards he asked me he was like what has it been like living in London and having all these memories come up for you again. And after he asked that, I realized that I have been confronted by visual reminders of how things are now worse than they used to be. I'm physically shown what I've lost through these reminders, and yet I'm here. I'm not crying about it anymore. I don't feel broken about it anymore. And through these reminders and having that conversation, I realized, wow, I'm actually getting better. And it's shown me that what once might have caused you so much pain, will no longer affect you one day. And you won't even realize it. 
And don't get me wrong, it does take work, okay? Time is not a healer. It is what you do with that time that heals you. It was building a new life for myself and moving on that granted me this newfound sense of peace. And it was in getting so swept up in living in this newness I created for myself that I forgot that I healed from what was hurting me the most. And although it's quite vulnerable for me to talk about, I wanted to share it just in case you were on this journey of hurting and healing to show you that there is hope. And don't get me wrong, it is still very bittersweet, but what's important is that it's manageable. And healing isn't about everything being fixed and going back to normal and everything's perfect. Sometimes it's just about being okay in the face of pain and then being able to go about your day as normal. It reminds me of breakups as well. Like it's a lot easier to heal from heartbreak of your ex if you're no contact and you never see each other, but you truly know that you've healed from someone if you come face to face with them or if they reach back out to you and you can look them in the face or you can talk to them and say, actually, no, this isn't what I want anymore. Never seeing someone again or never being reminded of them gives you this safe space where, you're, where you can forget about them and you can suppress certain emotions. But when all of it comes flooding back, it's your response then that matters the most. But since I mentioned my boyfriend that, I thought I'd give you guys a little update of what it's been like to be living in with my boyfriend for almost two months now. It is such a major change after living alone for the last year and living alone through university. Living alone was my safe space and what I felt comfortable with. And so I was hella scared for this point in my life and yet everything has turned out to be so good. And I am not just saying that because I would be the first person to talk about any struggles that I've experienced and how we're working through them. But I am being loved so loudly and proudly and this environment is giving me happiness and fulfillment that I didn't even know I needed. I'm actually in awe of how content I feel. I actually paused in one of the happy moments that we had recently and I just took a step back to think, I can't believe I'm here. Like, I really created the safe space that I was never shown. To be this outspoken and expressive in love and affection when it was something that I've never been used to is crazy. Like actually an achievement. It's so peaceful. There's no arguments. There's no silent treatment. No abuse, no bare minimum, no low effort, no too busy for each other, no forgetting about each other, no bad vibes. That's something that I've mainly really been grateful for recently because it just really goes to show your past does not have to define where you go, who you are, or how you end up living. As I spoke a little bit earlier about having flashbacks to my childhood and happy family memories, or even what it was like growing up in London as a child, um, it actually reminds me of a question that I was asked recently by one of you guys who said how do I stop getting flashbacks of people who used to be my life or of my ex and I just think this is such an important question to address I did talk about it in my most recent main channel video which is my girl talk q and highly recommend you watch but I wanted to bring it up again because it made me realize how many flashbacks I get of the people from my past like all of the time whether it be like family members ex-friends or even exes even people that like I went on a date with once or spoke to once like I will never forget any of those people and I'm not mad about that at all even if these are people that I like heavily dislike or did me really dirty you should never want to wish your life away and it is so normal to be reminded of people that you no longer talk to you can't expect them to go out of your memory because they're no longer in your life your memory is like one of the greatest gifts in this life it's like this movie in your head of everything you've lived and everything you've gone through and everything you've overcome and grown through recently whenever I've been getting these flashbacks it's actually been a really comforting feeling for me because it makes me realize like damn you really have no idea who I am now like I really leveled up and I really transformed myself and I overcame everything I went through and while you may think you know me inside and out you are literally a stranger to me like you you don't know anything about me I have these flashbacks and I smile because I'm like I have changed so much since you knew me and I no longer identify as the person I was when we were in each other's lives that is such a beautiful thing because it's such a great reminder of how much we change throughout life and how much we overcome it's such a great feeling to be able to think like you have no idea who I am you might have had access to me at one point and like been my number one person in my life but I have grown and evolved to the point where you basically don't even exist to me it's like I never knew you because I am nowhere near 
who I used to be. I hope you enjoyed this deep chat. It was literally just me sat here getting ready for a filming day. I'm also gonna be interviewed for a podcast later. So it's just a whole day of like seeing people, being on camera, doing a lot of work things. But yeah, just sitting here getting ready and spilling all of my thoughts over things that have been on my mind over the last week. I can definitely make this into a series on this channel if you guys want more of these videos. If you do, comment down below the thought bubble emoji because honestly, the more I do of these, they're all gonna be different because I've always got tons of different things going on in my mind that are so different from each other every single week. But yeah, I hope this video inspired you in some way or you learned something new or maybe it provided you reassurance or you related to something that maybe I've been thinking about. If it did, please let me know in the comments because I would absolutely love that. If it maybe changed your perspective on something or gave you food for thought, that would be so, so cool. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you same time next week for a brand new vlog. Bye bye, I appreciate you.